I will I will uh, have it like as an interview. So starting my YouTube channel and happy to answer basically anything DeFi or crypto related. So like about myself, uh, you probably know, like I'm in a crypto full time since 2017. I uh, got introduced to Bitcoin in 2011 and reintroduced 2013 and uh, was very actively participating in the space, uh, visit and won like multiple hackathons, built a contract for a billion dollars. And uh, my personal area of interest, DeFi and particular stable coins, like a digital dollars on the blockchain. So I spent four years researching and developing uh, different stuff about this topic. So, but uh, I assume you have a more broader questions about NFTs and like hype and stuff like that. Well, happy to cover it as well. Yeah, because now it's uh, like a big hype. And uh, I think from uh, the beginning of this year, the capitalization of all this uh, economy, like uh, crypto art and the NFT, and all of this is uh, growing very fast. And uh, I would like to understand uh, why uh, is it like this? What's the reason? How do you think? Uh, why is it like a rocket well, it's a great question, but uh, it's very important to understand what do you consider as a hype. So there are some subjective data and there are some objective statistic. So the most uh, famous, I would say right now, website in a um, you know, blockchain space is a coin market cap. And coin market cap is known for uh, manipulating data, uh, trading volume, and uh, sometimes prices. So I would personally recommend to use coingecko.com instead of coin market cap because they're more legit, at least in my point of view. And here you can see uh, different projects. So it's essentially like a, a stock market, but for a penny stock, which happens to be a DeFi project, happens to be coins from blockchain, happens to be all of those things. And you can filter here uh, different categories. You can see, for example, uh, some coins who use a particular uh, proof of work uh, scheme. It's like uh, how it works internally, like all this consensus mechanism. Or you can see it as a, a stable coins. So stable coins, and when you type a stable coins, well, again, my internet is slow uh, in terms of latency, but uh, when it will load it, you will see a different stable coins. So you can compare a different macroeconomical uh, parameters of these uh, projects, like a Tether, uh, the most famous one. It has a, a volume of... Uh, uh, no way, it's too much. Ah, well, it's a Bitcoins, yeah, <laughs> sorry. So let's make check it's in US dollar. So it has a hundred billion dollars uh, trading volume for the last 24 hours. And the market cap is about $60 billion of worth of USDT. And uh, next runner up, it's a USDC. It's a coin from a Coinbase. So this is uh, coins from um, a big exchanges. So Tevor is a pet project of uh, Bitfenix. I uh, use DC is a project affiliated with a Coinbase. It's the largest um, uh, cryptocurrency exchange in the United States. And a Binance USD or BUSD is a project from Binance. Uh, Binance is the largest um, uh, cryptocurrency exchange, I think, in the world, but in China for sure. And DAI, you see, it's way smaller. It's uh, very, very small in comparison to all of them. It's a decentralized Ethereum. Uh, it's like you can keep it as a, a DeFi. Uh, stable coins. And another website is a uh, Zbank. So when you would looking for a uh, DeFi, you will find probably a uh, DeFi pools. And I would not recommend to use DeFi pools because uh, they uh, have uh, cases I know uh, personally when they didn't list projects for a personal uh, reasons. Like uh, they uh, didn't list uh, one inch while one inch was a very large project with billion dollars trading volume just of the personal disagreement of something. And they also haven't listed like, Sigma. Well, like, Sigma have 140, like about $140 million. And I assume there might be a lot of different projects which didn't get on the list just because the team didn't like that. So it's not how a statistic and a space should work. So I would not use DeFi pools as I would not use CoinMarketCap. So CoinGecko and the Zbank is better alternatives. And if you speak about market, uh, some kind of not analysis. So it's not insightful info. It's a general overview, a beginner, like one-on-one for a DeFi uh, ecosystem. And you can see here like uh, slash projects, like a uh, list of all projects. 
when you can categorize it, for example, in an Ethereum-based uh, DEXs, uh, which stands for Decentralized Exchange. The largest one is a curve. So it has um, like about $8 billion or $6 billion in a different type of measurement. I believe it's uh, differ in uh, native assets versus derivatives because you can kind of inflate your volume using derivatives. And uh, you, can, you can check different statistics. So why it went up? Uh, nobody knows for sure, but I assume it's some kind of um, coincidence of uh, having technology which was mature enough uh, to give a particular user value. So you can exchange coins, you can create coins, you can leverage coins, you can loan coins and stuff like that with uh, uh, maybe COVID uh, crisis because uh, during COVID crisis, you get uh, some relief uh, paychecks uh, for American citizens. And maybe, I don't know, this is speculation, but maybe this gave a lot of free uh, kind of like floating cash in the hands of people who haven't considered uh, to invest it anywhere and they decide to do it because they were staying at home. So you get a lot of population who do not get outside, but instead of got inside with some bunch of money. So maybe this was some kind of catalyzer or a booster. I don't know. Nobody knows for sure. But what is for sure, what you can see how the market uh, went up. So it will take also uh, some time. But uh, when the graphic would look, you will see that it actually what was exponential until the, I think February 2021. And it went uh, from like last year uh, in the May of 2020, the whole DeFi ecosystem was less than $1 billion. Right now it's about $60 billion. Yeah, good in, growth. Yes. Uh, Vera, though, you can see what uh, from $130 billion Accruing derivatives, it went down uh, a little bit in uh, 18 of May, and the reason is unknown. So I personally do not know uh, for sure, but like the obvious reason why it might be because China uh, and Elon Musk uh, signaling bad news uh, for a Bitcoin and Ethereum and other blockchain uh, from price point of view empirically behave like a derivative of Bitcoin. So that's why uh, at least I personally measure performance of Bitcoin as asset in dollars, but performance of all, all, all other assets, including Ethereum in the Bitcoins. Because if Bitcoin goes down, everything goes down. If Bitcoin goes mm -hmm. up, likely mostly everything goes up. So it makes sense to measure performance of portfolio of anything except Bitcoins in Bitcoins as your unit of measurement. Your portfolio is one Bitcoin or half Bitcoin or three Bitcoins. So you measure it in a Bitcoin because price of Bitcoin is such an unpredictable thing that, well, at least for me, I never even consider uh, to try to predict how Bitcoin would behave. It's super random. It's like a weather. You might predict it like how it might go like in the closest week because of current trends. And I believe what would be a global warming. And I believe what Bitcoin would go up because uh, it takes um, kind of position or a niche of a digital gold because Bitcoin shares uh, a lot of properties with real gold. I would say a lot of same properties except two. One of them that uh, you cannot use Bitcoin in the real world is you can do with gold. You can use gold in a jewelry. You can use gold into uh, some semiconductors. You can use gold in a, some sort of uh, uh, coins, you know, like for uh, collectors and stuff like that. You cannot do it with mm -hmm. Bitcoin, mm -hmm. but you can send Bitcoin over internet. And it's an intrinsic value. It's a property, an reliable property from Bitcoin, but you can send it over internet. You cannot do it with gold. And I think if you remove those two things, everything else is the same. So it's a store of value, it's bad unit of measurement, and it's historically it performed very well. So I don't think Bitcoin would go anywhere anytime soon. And if anything would happen, it only would go up, but it's not investment advice. And I personally measure performance of all our cryptocurrencies in a Bitcoin, just because it's like a central index, it's like S&P 500 of a whole crypto space, even though it doesn't technically uh, like works like that, empirically it does. Uh, did I answer your question or you ask something else? Uh, so uh, you think that uh, DeFi is totally connected with uh, Bitcoin rate? 
And uh, I also heard the idea that uh, uh, much like COVID money uh, was given to people in states and they tried to spend it to somewhere and they started to spend it to DeFi and like uh, crypto art. Because, for example, I know some strange uh, situations that people do something very, very <laughs> strange art and they sell it for millions and uh, it uh, looks very crazy. And uh, I think uh, only one thing can explain that there are many people that can spend like 100 bucks just for nothing. And uh, well, all this market. A very good question. Yeah. I would personally consider NFT and DeFi as a separate trends. One kind of like a kick uh, in our one. So like a rise of probably a price of Bitcoins kicked out DeFi rise and DeFi uh, kind of skyrocket kicked in NFT skyrocket as well. I don't know for sure. And retrospectively, you can make a lot of different theories. The question is how they would predict the future because it's easy to explain the past, but very difficult to predict the future reliably. And I see NFT as more general purpose technology than just a digital art. There is some hype about digitalization of some art. There are some pictures which got sold for millions and tens of millions of dollars. I unable yeah, to how explain. Do you explain this. I unable to explain and I'm not trying it. The question is why I'm not trying to explain this is there might be reasons, but likely it's some sort of a hype because you can see what in a secondary market, usually always NFT traded for lower prices. It means that it's not really self-sustainable. I cannot say it for sure, but at least like it doesn't, it does look like that. But NFT is way more than an art. You can uh, tokenize uh, pretty much anything any kind of ownership, if there is a, some like regulations in the jurisdictions that would honor the right of a properties or anything like that, according to something um, once and zeros on a blockchain. And there are big moments in that. In the United States, there are company, I don't remember the name, I can share it later, uh, which does tokenized properties right now. And you can tokenize property and you can buy part of this property like for $1 if you want. And you get part of a profit from a rent out as a, I believe it Airbnb or something like that. Basically, you kind of rent out your property for a profit. And this is huge market. I mean, it's largest market in the United States is a real estate. If you see amount of a capital locked, there are trillions of dollars in the United States because land is very expensive. So if you speak about value and potential value, which can go in NFT is immeasurable. It's so large. And art is just maybe some trend which gonna be here or might get disappear tomorrow. I cannot know. But technologically speaking, NFT is very uh, interesting concept which well would stay for a long time. At least I do not see a reason why it's not. And we yet to discover because art is like relatively small market. I mean, yeah, there are some big pictures. Maybe because like NFT art connected with some influencers so basically people who interact with this creation of nft things also people who have a lot of followers on twitter or a lot of media coverage so it just happened that people who create a like kind of information for mass consumption also be target for creation of these nft things and maybe this kind of like a create self-sustainable a growing mechanism why it became so popular. But again, secondary market clearly show what this art is like. It doesn't treat nearly as a initial price. There are a lot of talks what it might be some particular deals with NFT money laundry and you can inflate the price. I mean, I can just put like half a million dollar and buy my own NFT. And it's like, hello, I just created and sold like half a million dollar NFT. So, and try to sell it in the secondary market. I mean, easy as that. You can also do it with DEXs, but a lot, a lot of things you can be um, kind of uh, conscious uh, to do not get fucked up. But <laughs> it's a very um, kind of like high run market. So I personally do not own any uh, like a high value NFT. So maybe I'm not a target audience, but my honest opinion, but technology is good. Technology is here to stay. Technology might see a hundred or thousand X grow but I cannot say anything about digital art. And I think digital art is overhyped and overheated market. So you think that NFT is future 
and everything uh, will go to this uh, this market not everything but there are a lot of cases as i told for example with real estate i mean you can tokenize them island i know the guys who tokenize right now a gold mine in amazonia rainforest well i don't know them personally i know a guy who tokenize them and mm -hmm. the reason behind it you cannot do it in a classical finance very cheaply so you would like to attract some sort of investment and you would like to offer your investor some interesting properties, which is easy and possible to program on the smart contracts, but very complicated and especially super complicated to enforce it in a classical finance manner. You will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars just for a lower paperwork and it would be incomprehensible. So these kind of democratize the complicated financial tools and give access like uh, for everyone it's what is cool at least for me in DeFi. i mean i can trade all those coins like in any time like there is no weekends like in the stock exchange there are no brokers there are no someone to get my kyc i mean i really hate like the stuff like oh you should send us a passport and stuff like that i also have a personal story get like blocked in the different centralized services like i am ex a former engineer of facebook and I get banned on Facebook, even though like my avatar picture was with Mark Zuckerberg. And it's like, it didn't help. I get blocked in Binance. So I just put there two ether and wasn't able to pull back, well, since 2017. So I absolutely hate centralized platform. And I think we're quite a lot of people like myself. And for me, this universal, like I would call it democratic because it's equal for everyone. Access for financial tool is really, well, a blast. And there might be a lot of people like me who are ready to invest. So for people who prefer not classical finance, uh, sort of a paperwork, but instead of smart contract and tokenization with all of NFT, it might uh, open a gate for broader uh, audience of investors. Yeah, majority of us like retail investors, not professional. So you will have a lot of scam, a lot of people who try to offer something which looks cool, but doesn't have underneath value. Uh, this is uh, kind of like bad side of the model. But the bright side, what it became super fair. Everyone can do it. You shouldn't be a rich individual in the United States to have access to your stalls anymore. And market is large. I mean, not only the United States like uh, has investors. There are 8 billion people on this planet. And if someone would like to participate in a sponsoring some gold mine in Amazon rainforest in Brazil, but right now you have to be like uh, have to list it somewhere in american exchange and you have to be a client of american exchange so a lot of things a lot of paperwork a lot of frequency or um, uh, friction a lot of uh, problems uh, to do it but when you tokenize it like you have ac universal access i mean i can be in china be a russian citizen and invest in some kind of brazilian rainforest gold mine like this with Click all buttons. Yeah, and and this uh, this case with gold mine, how much money do they gain with this platform? Again, I uh, I don't know this guy personally. I know guy who tokenized it, and I don't think I'm able to speak about that. And uh, quite honestly, I don't know a lot of details. I know case for uh, United States real estate. I can check it out. Let's see. Yeah. I'm just asking because uh, I have uh, one talk with my friends. I have one of idea to make a range of funds to invest in startups. And he told me that uh, you can like uh, tokenize your idea and to collect uh, the fund from many, many people. Like they can give you 100 each people and to take like 10 million for, for example, and to invest them in startups. And uh, uh, I'm interested in how do you think will it work? Uh, do people do this? Just off top, this platform for tokenization of real estate called a real uh, real CO. I haven't invested anything in this platform, and I think it requires KYC. So it's not like a, a something I personally like because for me, you know, KYC is like really blessed. I absolutely hate paperwork. As I, I, I pay taxes anyway from like income, like uh, these things doesn't help. But uh, answering your question about, well, having a hedge fund or whatever, like investment fund and to tokenize the kind of uh, ownership of this uh, joint venture and sell it might be interesting. But again, I cannot give you investment advice well, because it would be legal. But there are companies who do something like that. 
However, they common um, properties of what they are decentralized. The biggest one is why earn. So what why earn is, it's kind of joint venture, but on a blockchain. So you can put your uh, crypto dollars, for example, into their account and uh, why earn uh, reinvest these dollars where they consider is safe and profitable. So basically you kind of, yeah, it's like a hedge fund, but it's totally on blockchain run by smart contracts and uh, decision-making like where to put this money, like um, what platforms and how much, how to diversify a portfolio happens to happen via some sort of a decentralized governance. So there are shareholders and I believe they vote uh, using their tokens, using their shares, uh, where to put uh, this money. So by your finance is likely something which, well, uh, it's super DeFi specific. In your case, you might do it centralized. But again, I'm not a professional investor, nor I never work for VC. I'm not a right target audience to give you advice as how to run a, a venture capital company or hedge fund. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I understand. Connect, yeah. I, I mean, like uh, idea, if, for example, you have an idea, you can tokenize it and take money from people all, all over the world. It's not uh, well, about VC, just general. I mean, how do you think how it well, works? Uh, well, there are quite a lot of obstacles to do that. Well, if you uh, want to be in Russia and never leave like a uh, space of like uh, Eastern Bloc, you might do whatever you want because the law, the law is inapplicable. But if you would like to travel to the United States like uh, at least one more time, uh, you have to follow the law. And the law clearly says yeah. you are unable to sell as securities. So again, I'm not a lawyer, not investment advice, so I cannot give you a particular um, answer on your situation. But there are some cases which you can use. Like if the token uh, not deem a security or like a special test, like whether security or not, and you have like a legal company who just shared legal opinion, okay, so this particular token is not a uh, security. Uh, you can do it, but sounds what you're trying to do is exactly sell on securities. So this might be not what easy as you think, because while it's technically you can just every whatever, every person who can write smart contracts can just write any smart contracts and sell it on the internet. Like unless you do it anonymously, uh, you have to follow the law. And if you do it anonymously, now yeah. don't trust you. So this is kind of like a um, balance, uh, create a balance in the space. So uh, you have anonymously built project only with very strong tech because like nobody would invest in some mediocre tech if team is anonymous because like they can just steal your money, right? And unfortunately, it is for me that uh, if a company would like to do it according to the law, a lot of very, very cool tokens, which I would like personally to buy, I wouldn't able to buy it because I have to be either some particular citizen of jurisdiction or should have some like uh, particular things which I do not have or might not have or just do not want to provide them. So this is a problem. That's why I really prefer anonymously project with a strong tech. Well, because strong tech is cool. An anonymous project gives me well, basically no, <laughs> no kind of any friction uh, to purchase it. But there are some, let's say, workarounds. Uh, for example, like Curve. Uh, Curve uh, Dotify is the well, largest project on Ethereum DeFi right now in terms of uh, total value blocked. Uh, as you've seen, it's about $8 billion on Ethereum. And it has a special token. Token, which is legally not security. It's a, it has utility and stuff like that. But it is token which goes up in value. Well, hopefully it goes up in value. But it behaves sort of like security, but legally it's not security. So a lot of projects in DeFi right now use uh, legal loopholes to sell tokens, which people would like to buy and speculate on, but which legally is not security. And there are way like uh, complicated things like how you can do it, but it's legal work. So I'm uh, unable to share it during our conversation, but you can just go across the space and see different like assets and see how they behave. And if you consider what this asset is worth to buy, you can buy it. So this doesn't really look any different when you just buy stock on uh, some New York stock exchange. One thing you can buy, it's a uh, fraction of that. So it's unnecessary to buy one full token. You can buy any amount of tokens. You can buy 0 0.001 tokens. Like it's uh, usually infinitely divisible. 
very democratic in this sense, but you have to be very careful to do not buy some scam thing. And you can not even buy thing, you can just well put dollars. So as you can see here, like LUSD, it's a relatively new project and it has a 20% plus 15% uh, APR. There are a lot of like a CRV, LQT, blah, blah, blah. But basically it means if you put your dollars into format of a stable coin, so you can think about as a dollars on a blockchain. Now, before I show you in CoinGecko, there are different types of dollars on blockchain. They have different properties, different issues, et cetera. And we have very few time to go in deep, but I can speak hours about that. It's my area of particular expertise and like my area of like really interest. But you can put any of those or majority of those uh, crypto dollars into these accounts. And for having it in this account, this money works as a liquidity source for exchanges. So they need this as a, uh, some kind of medium for revenue. And you receive uh, rewards in the form of these tokens. So CRV is a token of this platform, Curve.ify, and proportionally to your capital. So if you put like a million dollars worth of dollars here, uh, you will get about 200K every year worth of CRV by current prices, of course. So it's kind of like immediate projection of your APR and about 15% of uh, tokens of this particular crypto dollar. So what it means that you can just, instead of investing, you can kind of deposit your dollars on accounts and get like 30% APR, which might be comparable to something which, well, investment funds do, not very successful one, but the risk is quite low because cryptography is, well, fairly proved, there are $8 billion bounty. So if this particular implementation of smart contracts had some issues, likely some hackers would already exploit it. So if you have a lot of uh, um, total value locked, it's a good sign. The longer it exists, the more capital, the more likely someone would be already hacking it. But if people haven't hacked it, likely it's secure. So nobody will give you 100% guarantee and it's not a bank account. So there is no insurance whatsoever. So if you lose, you lose. But historically, well, the curve wasn't hacked and it's going to give you 35% APR with relatively a small perceived risk on a dollar. So no volatility whatsoever. You put dollars, you get more dollars out. And this might be also very interesting. I believe that's why it's so big because, well, uh, while it's cool to have a roller coaster right on a Bitcoin price, not for everyone. And like, you know what Bitcoin like went down or Ethereum went down twice just two weeks ago. So right now it's 28th of May. And I think about like 15th of May, right? So all crypto goes like twice down. So this is definitely not for everyone, especially for people who do like marginal trading, etc. A lot of people got like uh, marginal cold, but people who are risk averse, put in stable coins for some conservative APR, but without pretty much having that much risk of volatility, it might be way to go. And for a lot, a lot of money, especially like in your market of luxury real estate, people who invest likely very risk averse, they choose real estate, not because they like twice X volatility of Bitcoin, right? Again, not yeah. advice, not advice. You know, you market like a million times better than I do. But if you see uh, from purely the risk reward perspective point of view, in DeFi, you have a two ways. One of them, you have a risky way with potential very high upside, but very low like uh, downside because like you can lose everything. You know, it's just a penny stock thing. And another one where you do not invest, but you rent out your capital is you do it for a banks when you deposit it in a saving account. So it's a very similar operation in that sense. You just put your capital and you get out with some percentages. The only difference, like if private banks in the United States will give you 1.5, APR at the best, like annual interest rate. Like have you have here like 30. So it's like 20X of that. And yeah, I'm not it's... sure. It's not gonna stay for for like uh, forever, but well, it exists for a year already on the bull market. I believe that this lower uh, base APR is what is you really get from a commissions. So basically because this uh, liquidity used as a revenue a medium to facilitate uh, exchanges on this curve exchange. And each exchange uh, have a fee. Uh, in their particular case, I believe for every pool is different. You can think it as a something like a quarter percent 
So if you exchange million dollars one stable coin for a million dollars of another stable coin, you would pay uh, two and a half thousand dollars uh, in a in like as a commission. And this commission goes to um, people who uh, provide the liquidity, liquidity providers. And this base API is, uh, well, you can see here. So it's comparable to banks, 1.5%. It's, it's uh, like if, if, if I would look for a simple explanation, it's like you give a deposit to the bank, but bank gives you not only interest rate, but also gives you a shares of a bank. Imagine if you put deposit in a Tinkoff, you will receive one share of Tinkoff or whatever. Like, I don't know how it legally looks like. So this is a case for a DeFi right now. I don't think it's self-sustainable, but I cannot argue like for how long it might be. It might be like uh, this year it would disappear, like API would go like down, or it might stay forever. I mean, I do not have a strong argumentation why it might not exist forever as a perpetual mechanism. Prices would go down for sure. So I don't think 30 APR are self-sustainable, but it likely will go down for maybe 10%, which is way better than banks anyway. I mean, in the long run, it would be anyway better than banks because banks have to pay salaries for accounters, for different things like uh, with legal frictions for uh, brick and mortar offices, you know, and big banks have a lot of employees, like hundreds of thousands, right? Like a Sberbank bank or like Bank of America. And uh, here in DeFi, well, when you deploy a contract, you have no expense whatsoever. Like it's built on a blockchain. You don't pay for it anything anymore. So you pay only for this front end, but I believe you can pay this for a front end, like $20 a month. Imagine what bank have expenses $20 a month. I mean, I do not know how much they pay for a server, but I totally can see how it could be. And it's uh, way more efficient in comparison with like um, classical banking system or classical finance. And therefore, if it's more efficient, you can spend more free resources to pay interest for liquidity providers. But more and more capital would go in the blockchain. The competition would uh, rise up among the investors, among the liquidity providers. And well, it's a, it's a free market, it's a supply demand market. So if like exchange can attract uh, funds cheaper, they would do it, you know? And I think that it's what uh, kind of cancel each other, but I project what this cancellation uh, interest rate would be higher than banks, like at least 5X, 10X easily. Uh, do you have any more questions? Like, let me check how much time do we have in this record thing. Uh, Probably we have about five minutes left. Uh, so what do you think as a perspective of all this stuff like NFT and uh, crypto also? So it will grow all time or um, how do you well, think it will change? Well, we already saw a correction, like all market went twice down. And right now it's kind of bouncing up, so it might also goes down. But ultimately, I'm very bullish in crypto. So what you understand my situation, I have less than a half percent of my money not in crypto. I closed like mm -hmm. a majority of my banks. I have a couple of banks left. And I have like, I uh, use either cash or like very like uh, least necessary amount of funds in a banking system and everything else I keep in a crypto. And I never felt better, not because it only goes up, it also goes down quite a lot, but just because how free I feel. I mean, this feeling of having like fate in your own hands, like when no one can block your money or freeze your account or kind of as Binance did and freeze my two ETH, like I, I felt very bad as uh, Citibank like stole my $1,400 because they had some security breaches. Well, I felt bad. And I just didn't feel bad because I lost money. I feel, uh, I felt very insignificant. I felt what I don't have any power to say. It's like you're in a hostage in this situation. You're like a small man in comparison to a big institution, big system, which can just like break you. And here in DeFi, here in blockchain, I mean, I own my money. For some but I think there, are, there were some situations when some Bitcoins or something like this were stolen. And it's, it's also never, not 100%. Ne never ever it was stolen because of cryptography compromise. So it was always some kind of hacks on a user interface. Well, my situation is not for everyone because well, I work full time in the space. I'm a mathematician myself. I get like math education, uh, do cryptography. So I do not use 
uh, tools what majority of people would use. But uh, during the time, because of competition between those projects, it's well, created very safe uh, tool chain. So right now you can just install Trust Wallet, for example, right from Victor Achenka or some kind of uh, whatever analog of a hardware wallet like uh, a Ledger Nana. It's like it looks like a thumb stick, thumb drive, like very small thing. When you keep your cryptographic key and you can put as many accounts here as you want and put some passwords, put some fake passwords, like you will never, it's pretty secure. And it might be uh, like uh, problematic in some jurisdictions like uh, Russia, when you just, you know, police will come to your house and try to steal your money because you'll never save in this jurisdiction. But it's going to happen with bank account as well. You can just force you to just wire transfer. It. And uh, it's uh, something what you should be aware of, what will raise some risk of your personal mismanage. Right. So nobody's going to be BCD. Like you have responsibility of your money. It's your, but you can easily lose it if you do something wrong. But if you don't do something wrong, I mean, I felt way better with banks. So if you do not feel confidence what you can manage your own money, sure, put it in a bank, put it in a hedge fund, whatever. But if you don't have enough money, well, the bank will give you no interest. You wouldn't even be able to put money in a hedge fund in the first place. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of pain in us with paperwork. And right now, yeah. if you have a lot of money, like uh, you can get better interest just having a stable coins. If you have a lot of uh, little money, you can trade on with penny stocks, which you are unable to do anywhere else. There are some applications, very cool. Well, it used to be cool one, like a Robin Hood. And I believe like in Eastern Europe, like Tinkoff Bank does some kind of investment stuff like that when you can put a couple of dollars in some uh, blue chip penny stock. But I'm not sure how they perform. I mean, if you have little money, like it sounds like an optimal strategy to invest in very risky uh, endeavors where like if you lose, well, you didn't lose a lot of money. But if you win, you win at least so much what it's you. It will make difference for your life, right? So if you do, if you invest $100 and it will do it 10x, you you have $1,000. I mean, it's great, but it's not going to change your life. But if it gets like a thousand X, like hundred K already good money, you can well buy a house in some jurisdictions. You can pay for your education. It can be a life saving if you have a good save, but if you have something with your health, so it's a lot of money. But uh, this is uh, what uh, I personally think is uh, good. I, I believe what everyone should have a choice, right? So if you feel that it's not for you, I mean, nobody force you, right? It's not like with bank, but you have to have a bank account to pay taxes and stuff like that. But uh, if you feel what you would like to have alternative, like there is alternative for you. And I think a lot, a lot of people in the modern world feel very unfair because like there is some very huge uh, separation between rich and poor. There are a lot, a lot of mismanagement of the economy. Like for example, even if you speak about like local fiat money, like uh, Ukraine, Lebanon, Venezuela, Argentina, I mean, hyperinflation. And it's like, you work very hard, right? You work very hard and you lose all your mm -hmm. money because like some old uh, politician decide to, well, uh, do some bad things. And you feel unfair, but here you can just exit with unfairness and like there are a lot of risks, but uh, if the more space would mature, the better tools it would offer, but more safe assets with lower API it would offer, I think a lot of people would find it uh, a better alternative than a classical finance. And there are 8 billion people on this planet. Right now, investment yeah. like is for maybe, I don't know, a golden billion, maybe golden 100 million people who do investment. But as soon as it's going to be available for everyone, you'll have massive flow, a lot, a lot of tools. So I believe the market would grow at least 10x and it closes like a decade, and DeFi would do even faster. I don't know DeFi as a whole, but stable coins for sure. Well, because it's uh, out of $2.5 trillion right now, or oh, market cap. Let me check exactly. It's, uh, oh, wow. Market cap is only $1.6 trillion right now. <laughs> but uh, it used to be <laughs> 2.5, like last, uh, last time I checked. But even with this, uh, you have about uh, $80 billion of worth of stable coins, right? So if you divide 80 by this, it's like how much? About 5% uh, are stable coins. I would expect that 30% of this market has to be in dollars because of how a classical finance looks like. 
five percent is nearly not enough because the dollar is what everyone uses. And right now I have only five percent, so I would very I would give very close look to the stable coins, just because like it's gonna go in inevitably it's gonna do like at least five x. Like no way it's not mm -hmm. gonna do five x. Like I can bet any money what in ten years it will do at least five x. Probably it will do even three x in the closest year. I don't know for sure, but in a decade, my question is here. And if we do, like, well, there would be more emergent use cases of that, where it would be better tools. So you can try to look for these stable coins or for these tools to invest. Might be very good, uh, well, hedging against uh, real estate. Yeah, it's a good idea to try. Not investment advice, but it's what I personally do. <laughs> uh, do you have any more questions while we still have time left? I think. Uh... For the beginning, it's uh, super interesting. Everything is clear. Thank you for answering everything. Yeah, you're very welcome. And I hope, yeah, maybe if we have any new ideas and themes to discuss, we will do it again. Totally. Uh, well, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, also, take a look on this real .co. I think it might fit your uh, prior experience in a client base. I don't know how it works uh, from inside out, but Anton Bukov, like I recommend it. It's my ex-boss uh, from running and I trust well his judgment. And I hear about this project before. I haven't invested because really? we do some sort of KYC, but it's something about real estate and something seemingly cool. I have no stake in this project. So it's, I don't have a bias uh, towards kind of to promote it. But if you're looking for something about like a blockchain DeFi, but you have a lot of prior experience and a client into real estate and luxury real estate, this might be worth to consider to take a look.